Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, it's Dodge from Big Mac's Workshop and Paint Studio. Like this week's release, we're now releasing some industrial bases where you can buy these off eBay. We've started this base with a uh, black primer and we're going to go straight to doing a base coat of dark rust. There's a whole bunch of new tips and tricks at the end of this video to uh, make these bases stand out more than they normally would. So stay tuned for those. We're now going to paint a flat brown in patches over the top of this. Again I'm using an airbrush with a pretty high PSI because I want a sporadic pattern on these. This is going to be the undertones of rust. We're going to put more colours over the top and then we're going to use chipping fluid to take it off. Now we're using the AK Interactive Chipping Fluid and what I didn't realise when I did this is I had forgotten to put a varnish down. So that step, put a varnish down first because if you don't, you're more likely to pull off your base coats of paint when you start scrubbing away the chipping fluid and that's not good. Now I've put a bit of masking tape on the um, on the base because I'm going to do some special chipping effects on this bit. I'm now going to use a Army Green by Army War Paints. Oh, War Painter, sorry. And we just want to cover these two tiles here because the other one we're going to do hazard stripes. So there's a lot of interesting features going into these bases. Next, we're going to use a Cayman Green, a game colour, and we're just going to hit the middle spots of these tiles. That way we're going to darken them. Once that's dry, mask can take the other area off. And we're going to start with a Baylor Brown by Games Workshop. Now, that's always a pain because it's a base paint to get through the airbrush, so add a little bit of flow aid, a couple of drops of that comes through a lot smoother and a lot easier to control. You want a nice even coverage of this. And once that's done, we're going to go over the edges with an Everland Sunset by GW. Leaving the um, dark patch in the middle. It's basically the reverse of what we did last time. That's basically because I didn't like the uh, base colour that I put down. It wasn't as vibrant as I wanted it to be. But with airbrush paint, you know, you can put on a bunch of layers. It's so thin that it's not going to obscure any details. And also with a chipping fluid it's best to be using an airbrush because it's a lot easier to scrub layers of paint off and do the chipping which I'll get to in a bit. So what I've done here because I went a bit too light is I've gone back over the centre with a bail all brown. Make it a bit darker. So the shadow I like the shadows in the middle of the tiles and the highlights towards the edge. Some people like to do it the other way around. You see it on a few tanks. Some people do the um, centre lighter but a matter of preference, I just prefer to have the centre darker and the edges lighter. Now this is some Tamiya masking tape, if you haven't got any and you want to do hazard stripes I'd recommend this, it's the least likely to pull any paint off of your model. It's not that expensive, you can buy it off eBay for a few quid and it's um, Paint doesn't run off it like it would other masking tapes. It bonds well enough to stop paint getting underneath it, but not so much that it will pull paint off when you take it off. And now we're going to a black primer again. 
we're just going to spray straight over the masking tape, leaving I'll leave the pattern behind. And the reason I'm using two different masking tapes is because obviously the really cheap masking tape that's on there is just simply cheap. You don't want to be using Tamiya to cover the entire entirety of the base. We're now switching to White Grey by Vallejo Model Air and again we're just going to do the edges of the um, tiles giving a faded effect leaving a dark bit in the center and once that's done gently peel it all off so you don't pull any of your paintwork off That's like the first steps. That's all your base coat's done. Once I can get this thing to focus properly. And of course, it looks too clean for what I want. Because we're doing it, we're still doing the um, Nurgle theme this month on the Facebook page, so check that out. Um, so we, we're going for a sort of Nurgle theme. Now, because of the chipping fluid, um, adding a little bit of water to the toothbrush and then just dabbing away at it. I like to use the bristles to um, stab into the paint to get it to come away a bit rather than scrub with all the bristles which can smudge more paint because obviously it's airbrush paint, it's thinner and more likely to, more likely to um, smudge when watered and watered down, sorry. But um, now just stabbing away with the end and you'll see all the uh, paint starts to come up revealing the uh, first layers of colour and that's why we had the sporadic browns. See now the rust effect is multicoloured instead of just, I mean if you if you haven't got a airbrush you can easily do this by uh, getting a bit of sponge from a blister pack and uh, doing it the old school way just dabbing it on. And like I said earlier you're going to see in a minute that um, I messed this up. See, there you go. That's when that, that's where I should have put the layer of varnish on. That would have protected the brown layers and stopped that bit of pink coming off. But I'm just going to fix that up. I'm going to go back to the um, rust dark, paint that in, top of a bit of black. Now to give the uh, metallics a quick coat, we're going to use army painter. Uh, Armour, which is a dark metallic colour. You could use a GW's um, is it chainmail now. I can't remember, they keep changing the names. Lead Belcher, is it? Yeah. So you could use Lead Belcher, but I pref prefer um, other paints. I put that on a bit thick because I didn't realise how thick that paint was. Um, a little bit of water, it'll go on a lot smoother. Then we're going to go to the good old fashioned GW Agrat Fair Shade, it's like the go to wash for anything. So everything's looking a bit too clean. Of course, you've got to be careful that the wash doesn't pull because it's a very flat surface. So, what I was doing was letting it pull in the middle and then trying to pull the puddle into the recesses so the excess will sit there and stain that properly. Give it an all around generous coat. Be careful not to be too heavy handed with your brush because again you'll be wetting the chipping fluid and that can cause paint to come off. But at this point that's not actually that much of an issue. It looks a lot better stained up and darkened but now we've got to pick out some more details. It's a bit too flat so we're going to go to the original colours that we were using before, so now we're going back to the army green. Shut up and sit down. And we're going to use a Windsor & Newton double zero and we're just going to hit all those edges. Just edge highlighting the entire thing, but because of all the chips, we're also going to go around the edge of the chips with this, and this is time consuming. But with a bit of practice you can get this down quite well and quite fast.
then we're just going to go around all the edges, all the raised bits and all the bits where the chipping fluid's gone, and that's going to add a high contrast, which makes the rust look like it's actually dug into the floor. I mean, a lot of the time when you're using a wash you can easily just if you want to do something quick and easy you can easily do a wash and then just go straight back to the other color that you were using the original base color and just go go over the edges with it or go back over it all oh. <clears throat> it obviously looks like two other colors by that point because the wash acts as a filter now we've done all the chipping on the green we're going to go back to the other highlight and I think we'll be using Everland Sunset watered down and do the edges on the yellow don't worry that it looks very very vibrant when you're painting it on because it's acrylic based paint when you water it down it always looks brighter than it will when it's dried shut up and sit down as you can see, the more details on the chipping, it's worth taking the time around the edges because it really starts to make it all stand out and then bring the whole base together. Now it's back to the light grey to do the chipping on the black bits. There's a whole variety of these bases. Um, this is a set of 10. You can see some of them in the background. Uh, I didn't do the painting tutorial for all of them, but there's some with the pipes, cables, and there's a range of 60mm ones coming out soon, as well as 40s and 25s. There's a few other variants. So, if you get the time, check out our um, eBay store. We'll post the link in the description. People are always asking where, where do these bases come from on our other videos. Well, that's where that's where you'll find them on our eBay store. And if you want to know more about more bases coming out, you can always check out our Facebook page, and I'll post the link for that in the description as well. This is a uh, simply the same same technique using the original color back over the wash, quick and easy. This was the um, armor by Army Painter. Just doing the edges with it. We may yet do another video connected to this one, adding even more rust effects and mud and other things. But we'll see how that goes depending on time. At the moment we're doing one video a week, so there'll be one next Friday, no next Thursday, sorry. And that's pretty much that. So if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment, 